Frederick. He almost completely missed me. I'm glad I got a chance here to be here in Paris. It's a wonderful time to be in Paris, early spring, uh, late spring, early summer, fantastic weather. We'll take credit for that. So now I heard that you had a lot of rain the last few days. We will not take credit for the transport transportation problems that you had. Um, so it's been wonderful to listen to the customer stories. Uh, definitely disadvantaged because we couldn't understand some of it uh, for those of us who don't speak French. Uh, but Nadine has promised that she's going to give us a debrief on everything that she spoke about, word by word, right? Um, so I head up the product team. I'm representing the product organization. Uh, I'm going to talk about all the things that you heard about from Frank, uh, the vision for Anaplan, where we're headed from a planning perspective, some of the trends that you heard about. And I want to take it down and talk about what it means from a platform product roadmap standpoint. Um, we'll, we'll cover the Anaplan platform, some of the key areas that we are focusing on, um, and what we're going to deliver both in the short term, mid term, as well as long term. So I'll take the next 10, 15 minutes to do that. And then we have a lot of breakout sessions later in the afternoon where we'll go, some of the product team members will go into a lot more detail. You heard a lot about connected planning, the key elements of connected planning, dynamic, collaborative, intelligent. Um, I heard a little bit from the previous panel as well. Dynamic came up a few times. We actually had a really nice exercise when we did a customer advisory board uh, at our Las Vegas hub. We asked them to describe Anaplan in a single word. And the words that we heard was transformative, real-time, um, revolutionary, uh, flexible, powerful, but by and far the most most were words that we heard were synonyms to dynamic. And you heard in the video, the customer video at the beginning, what Peter was talking about from Carter's. The reason they got Anaplan is the ability to make quick changes, to be very flexible, to respond to their customer to their changes in their market and customer demands. So the fact that we have this multi-dimensional platform uh, very easy to change, the, the hierarchies, you can respond very quickly. That comes up more and more every single time we talk to customers as a key element of the platform that serves uh, the dynamic nature of the planning that they need to do. I was reminded of a conversation that I had with, uh, with Google. Uh, so the Google uh, business operations manager, I was asking him, why did you choose Anaplan? What in the platform really resonated with you? And Google is known for building their own solutions all the time. The fact that they've invested in us is a huge testament to the power of the platform. And he said the main reason we did that is because Anaplan is a true platform. We can go in and make changes. Their business is not static. They need to make changes quickly. The days of doing planning and then waiting for one year to do replanning is over. So one of the key reasons he stated was the dynamic nature of the platform, the ability to make quick changes, bring applications up on the fly, change the model, change the business process quickly. Collaborative. So we hear this very consistently. Um, the platform was built to bring people in and be able to collaborate in a single source of truth. You heard Dave from Bacardi on the, um, on the uh, Anaplan video earlier. Um, from Cisco, we heard this consistently in the previous hubs as well. The reason they chose Anaplan is the fact that you can now have a single source of data, planning data, and you can have people collaborate on that common set of data. And we are doing more. Anaplan has always been built with collaboration in mind, and I'm going to talk a lot more about the other things that we are doing to improve collaboration. Intelligence in the platform has been built right from the beginning. Uh, we have the predictive methods in there, and we are doing a lot more. Of course, machine learning is at the forefront of what we are thinking about as well, and I'll cover that too. We've been doing a lot on the product side. I'm here representing all the product managers, the UX designers, the engineering team, the JAX organization, the technology ops team, QA, and so on. And we have done a remarkable uh, job speeding up and increasing the amount of uh, customer-facing features that we are delivering to you. So if I look at the last 12 months of what we have delivered, that's more than three times what we delivered in the 12 months prior to that. So I want to give a quick round of applause to the engineers and all the technology, the product people who have enabled this for our customers. 
So let me talk about specifically what are the investments we are making on the product roadmap. So there are three key themes that allow us to continue to make this the best connected planning platform that is in the market. The three key themes are user experience, intelligent planning, and enterprise success. So I'll cover user experience and intelligent planning in a little bit more detail. But enterprise success is all about making sure that as large companies, as large organizations, with your business demands, with the scale that you need, with the security requirements that you have, the governance that your IT organization demands and your business process demands, we as a platform have the right set of features to enable you to do that. So the kinds of investments we are making in there is to make sure that you can be even more scalable in the models that you build. Uh, the types of imports and exports within models, the amount of data that you can bring in. We are doing a lot of work to make that even better. Security, a um, lot of things happening on the security front. It's, it's never static. We always, as a cloud platform, you heard conversations earlier in the technology trends discussion about how security in the cloud is definitely easier to do in a sense, but you always have to stay ahead of uh, everything else that's happening out there in the world. We have to make sure that GDPR compliance is part of what we do, and we've already done that over the last, when, when, it, when the date came two weeks ago. So in addition to that, we're doing a lot more around being able to provide you additional security features like bring your own key. Those are capabilities that we're bringing into the product, and we'll continue to expand on it. A lot more options for integration, a uh, lot more work around application lifecycle management that allows you to do uh, that allows you to have governance built into the platform. And we are one of the first providers to have ALM built into, the, into a cloud platform. Usually it's more the, the on-prem uh, providers that provide that kind of feature. So let me dive a little bit deeper into user experience and intelligent planning. The days of uh, enterprise software users coming in and saying that yeah, I'll just survive, I'll manage with my product that my IT organization is providing me is over. Because we're all spoiled. We are spoiled by the, the fantastic user experiences that we get as consumers, right? So it's, it's the iPhone, Apple has spoiled us, Google has spoiled us, Facebook, Amazon, and so on. So we expect that kind of experience when we come in to, to our organizations to do the work that we need to do. So we think this part is really important. Uh, we are doubling down. We are investing a lot more in user experience. Um, and there are three key areas in user experience that I want to cover. The first is a set of immediate improvements that we are making in the product. And this has been received really well. A lot of you who are customers here in this audience, you already know the releases that we have, uh, we have been putting out over the last several months. This is a result of investments we made over the last year, year and a half. Personal safe dashboards, the ability for, even though it's a real-time modeling engine, the ability for the end user to have the selections that they made on filtering, sorting, and so on be saved so that the next time they come in and the model gets loaded into the memory, they, they get into the right set of dashboards with the right selections already preserved. This has been received really well. Huge usability improvement, huge productivity improvement for the end users. A couple of other examples, images on dashboards. So that's coming out in the, July 16th, uh, in the June 16th release now this weekend. So that's a pretty big release. If you go to our community site, you can actually go and look at the number of usability improvements that we have made there. So massive, massive investment uh, in, in delivering better user experience to our end users. So the images and dashboards has been something that customers have wanted for a while. We're delivering that. Different ways to search among a lot of page selectors, for example, um, undoing your last action. So some of it might seem like simple things, but again, Massive improvements in terms of productivity and usability. We are super excited to also release process workflow. And this workflow is a, a very overused term, um, but we are not out there to build workflow to compete with the BPM engines. This is workflow specific to, specific to planning. So you want to be able to connect with planners that are at different levels in your organization, different departments, uh, you want to make sure that you bring them in instead of having them outside the process with emails and other systems. So we are providing you now the ability to shorten the planning life cycles, uh, the cycle times, collaborate with the different stakeholders, and also making sure that you're guiding the planning participants and get them to the right place in the product. 
So it's not only about being able to create the workflow, but it's also about making sure that after you create the workflow and create those steps, when the end users come in, they know the exact place that they have to come in and perform the action, whether it's reviewing, approving, or entering more information in that correct step in the process. Tons of use cases for this across many different lines of business, whether it's approvals for your monthly budgets, it could be uh, your sales planning, it could be supply chain. Um, all of those require workflow. And we have several, about 20 to 30 customers who are already beginning to test it out in uh, early access. So very excited about this. The third area of user experience is actually reimagining the end user experience. And we're actually coming up with a brand new intuitive end user experience and a user interface uh, so that people who are planning participants who are not in the tool day in and day out can come in and participate without any training, and you're able to engage them. So you as a customer, when you roll it out internally, user adoption should be much simpler. So personalization is built in. Uh, multiple form factor supports is already there out of the, out of the box. And as you think about some of the ways that the new user experience looks like, it's about making sure that you provide the flexibility to the end user to design their end user experience the way that they want. Uh, again, different form factors, the fact that you have a lot of numbers coming in and a planning exercise, being able to figure out ways to provide that to you in a very easy, flexible manner, and also uh, coming up with a mobile app to perform certain set of functions. So you can see more in a, in a breakout section later today. Um, so Steve and Dave from the product team are running a one-hour session, so you should be able to go check out more details or go to the booth to find out more uh, about what the new end user experience will look like. And we're excited to say that we're going to launch that by the end of this year. So you'll, it'll be in the hands of customers in the second half of this year as well. Intelligence in the platform. So Jack talked a little bit about the fact that we think about intelligence in the platform in multiple ways. We think about predictive. This has always been built into the platform, and we are continually adding the number of predictive methods that's available for you in the platform. So customers can actually use this today, uh, and they can do linear regression techniques, uh, different kinds of exponential smoothing. You can do specific use case, um, specific algorithms like Erlangs for call center planning. Um, seasonal demand, uh, so different kinds of algorithms can be used today with the data that you have. Um, and, you, and we have customer examples of people who go in and download the app from the App Hub and implement the uh, predictive methods right away. So huge, huge first step. It's always, been, it's always been part of the platform. It's being used pretty widely. A big step that we made two months ago is to launch the Anaplan Optimizer. And the Anaplan Optimizer is about solving much more complex problems which have hundreds and thousands of potential feasible solutions. So you want to pick the solution that is most optimal for whatever the objective function is that you have, whether it's maximizing your profit, managing your margin, keeping a, lowering your safety stock, managing your inventory, whatever that might be. So the idea is that we would be able to, the end user using the optimizer, um, I would be able to plan this, model this within Anaplan using a model-based construct, very user-friendly, and set up these complex problems. And you'll be able to run these what-if scenarios very quickly, very fast, and it's powered by the fastest optimization, linear optimization engine in the market, and we provide that as a service. So super excited about this. We have about 10 customers or so. We're actually um, uh, using this in a test environment. Some of them are already live, solving all kinds of different problems with the optimizer. And this is what it might look like. So again, fairly complex types of issues. In this particular example, it's a network optimization problem. And then you can do, based on the standard functionality that Anaplan has, that customers here would recognize, easy to set up, easy to model, have different checkpoints, and run through these optimization uh, problems very quickly. So the third area is definitely about machine learning and AI. You heard a lot about it. And that is part of our intelligent planning journey. And if you think about what people have been talking about in terms of AI, I thought I'd put up a quote from Sundar Pichai, who's the Google CEO, who says, AI 
is as important to humankind potentially as the invention of the wheel. Andrew Ng, who's a Stanford professor, a thought leader in machine learning, says AI is like the new electricity. Instead, I thought I'll put up a different quote, a quote from Gary Kasparov, who's a chess champion, as you guys, a lot of you know, who might follow chess over the years. For about 20 years, uh, with the exception of two or three months in the 20 years, he was number one rated chess player in the world. And he has a lot of in-depth, direct knowledge with AI, because he was beaten by an IBM computer that was developed back in the mid, mid to late 90s, and that played chess. And the first time around, I think Gary Kasparov beat the computer one or two years later. That was kind of the turning point in terms of AI and machine learning. Fast forward 15 to 20 years, now there are computers that actually learn the game without even being taught. They can learn it themselves, right? So remar it's remarkable the changes in AI that's happened. But the way he talks about it is AI will become pervasive, but it will be a tool that will augment human decision making. And in the planning world, we believe the same way, the, the same thing as well. You heard that earlier as well in the, in, the previous, um, in the previous panel. We have a lot of people who think deeply about what planning is, where planning is going to go, what planning might look like in the future. Um, but we do believe AI has a place, machine learning has a place. We think it'll be a lot of automation that happens, but a lot of augmentation as well. So we are being pretty thoughtful in terms of how we think about the roadmap and what we want to do. So the first thing that we want to do is um, actually get into, the, get into the ML space and figure out what are the right use cases that we want to solve. So we already have a lot of proof of concepts with customers. So solving problems like improving the accuracy of demand forecast. So we have a customer in the CPG world where they have a multi-tier distribution system. They want to make sure that they get the right signals from their end customers relatively quickly back into the planning cycles instead of waiting for it to filter back through the channels. And they want to get that kind of data and apply machine learning with external data, like weather data or something else that might actually influence and improve the forecast that they have. That's one example of a POC that we're doing. Another customer is a pharmaceutical company, again, trying to figure out, can they get ahead of certain over-the-shelf type of medication? Can they get ahead of predicting the demand for it? So we're doing a lot of these supervised learning, augmented insights, type of proof of concepts. We're partnering with different, different technology providers in the ML space, like Google, uh, the machine learning team using TensorFlow as a, as a potential technology. So we have some examples in a breakout session later today. But as we do that, we're getting those learnings back into our platform. We've invested in machine learning teams. Uh, we want to figure out how to incorporate the right types of machine learning capabilities in the platform. We want to make sure that we get into other AI technologies in addition to machine learning in the background. How do we start building out this conversational UI? And the key elements of that is about natural language understanding. It's beyond just natural language processing, but it's also setting up the right infrastructure underneath to be able to enable the conversational UI, like the Alexa and the Siri and the likes of it. And then over a period of time, we do think that a lot more automation will get built in, and that will become a core part of the platform as we, as we think about the roadmap over the next few years. So we do, I, I do want to close by saying that from a user experience standpoint and an intelligent planning standpoint, we think that there is a unique combination of delivering that user experience and delivering that underlying AI-powered technologies, similar to what you saw in Frank's vision, that will be a differentiator. And I think Anaplan is going to be right at the front um, of delivering that value to you as a customer. So I want to stop there. This was a quick, brief 10 to 15 minute run through of high level. What are the, what are the areas that we are looking at? Uh, how we're going to deliver it? Some of the near term things that we're doing? Uh, some of the things that are going to come up later? Um, I would love to have you come in and uh, talk to the team in the, in the product team, in the Guru Zone. We have a product, uh, product uh, booth as well as a user experience booth. And our CS team is there as well. Uh, please attend the breakout sessions, uh, breakout sessions that are there in the afternoon that will go deeper into some of the areas I just covered.